Hello and welcome back to the KC Glassworks YouTube channel. Today, um, we're going to be working on a leaded stained glass sun catcher from start to finish. So it's a design that um, I already make and so, uh, and this one in particular is a custom order, somebody that wants particular colors. And um, yeah, so I'm just gonna go through Basically the whole thing, this might be a little bit longer of a video just because I'm going to try to be as detailed as possible, um, even though like it's probably going to repeat a lot of the same things that I say in some previous videos or some previous lives that you might have seen. But I think it's good to just, you know, keep uploading, you know, new process tutorial videos with the same details that you could have or might have missed um, in previous videos. So that's what we're going to do today. So right now I'm just going to explain a little bit of starting a custom order for somebody. Um, so let's say you go to a show or you're selling online and um, somebody is interested in the design that you make but they want different colors, maybe to accent their home or a particular room. So that's exactly what this lady wanted. She liked the this leafy design that I make out of a sun catcher, but she wanted the colors to accent her home. So choosing glass colors can be extremely overwhelming for people, especially because there is so many. So think of it like you were choosing paint colors for your home. You go to Home Depot and Lowe's and you see walls and walls of colors. You know sort of a range that you're looking for, but you have to take 10 different samples home, put it on your wall and see which one you actually like. So I like to narrow it down for customers just like that. So what she did was sent me some pictures of the space that she's going to be hanging this piece and um, sent me a few color samples. So mostly her colors were a very pale green, white, and then a little bit of blue accent, um, very natural, very uh, neutral. So that's what I was working with. So instead of being like, okay, like go to these stained glass websites and look at colors, too much, too overwhelming for people. It's hard to tell what the colors look like. Um, especially online because they're so different. And if you get a piece of glass in that looks completely different from the colors online, then it's just a whole thing. So what I do instead is show, especially for like smaller pieces, I show the customer what I already have and the options that they have with what I already have in inventory. So what I'll do is I'll choose three colors for the customer. So in this particular piece, it has three separate colors. So it has a background color, a leaf color, and a corner color. For each of those colors, I'll choose three different types of glass or colors, whatever the situation might be. So I had chose a mint green, uh, like a range of different moss greens, pale green stuff, for the leaves, the mint greens were like are going to be for the corner pieces of the sun catcher, and then the background color, which I chose like clears, whites, um, some with a little bit of teal in it. And again, I only chose three colors for each category um, of the sun catcher. And I took pictures of each piece of glass in its best lighting, so that might be in sunlight or it might be without sunlight. Whatever it is to capture the best picture of that sheet of glass is what I send to the customer so that they can see exactly what it would look like um, when they physically see it. So then at that point I would email them each picture of glass and I would label each picture of glass with a number. So let's say I was sending over the colors for the background I would say this is your color options for the background and I would label one, two, three and I would just tell her which one do you like the best and then she would just send me a number back and then again the same thing with the leaves 
And the same, same thing with these accent corners that are in this sun catcher. And then she just messaged me back with the combination that she likes the best. And it's just way more simplified for the customer. They can see what their options are and it's not overwhelming with the amount of colors. So with that being said, I'm going to get the glass out and I'm going to trace the pattern onto my glass and we'll get into the cutting portion of the video. Okay, so here are all of the colors that the customer chose. She chose this pale green, wispy green for the leaves, this mint uh, sort of opal opalescent uh, for the corners, and then this white and clear baroque for the background. So whenever I'm making my patterns, um, this one in particular, I drew on my iPad, which I have a video about um, on my channel if you want to check that out. And I printed out on cardstock and I cut my pattern with pattern shears, with lead pattern shears. Here is what the pattern shears look like. Um, they're normally labeled, so this one says lead. And then there's another one that you can purchase that says foil for copper foil patterns. Um, but it has this sort of double scissor mechanism where it cuts out um, the inside portion of the heart to compensate for the space that you're going to need when you're assembling your panel. So with that being said, I'm going to trace all of my pattern pieces with Sharpie on all of this glass. And um, I'll sort of explain what I'm going to do with this piece in particular. But yeah. I want to give you a quick explanation on how I'm going to set up the pieces to um, sort of flow in the same way throughout the whole panel. So on this piece of glass, I really like sort of like this area where there's a nice big swirl. There's a lot of movement in the glass. Um, you can see a good portion of that white. So. I'm going to try and keep it so that whenever I cut all the pieces out and assemble it all back together, it still has that same flow, that same pattern going throughout. So this piece would sort of be maybe right here. This one is the bottom piece. This is a side piece. And then this one is right here. So the only thing that can get a little tricky with doing this is obviously um, knowing where to cut first or break your first piece of glass. So what I'm going to do is sort of really keep these nice and close, almost like this. So I'm still going to... Um, trace these one by one um, but whenever I'm starting to score and break I don't want to have to spend a whole bunch of time at the grinder so to say um, trying to grind away some of the larger uh, scoring areas um, whenever I start breaking these so let me trace this out and I'll bring you back Okay, so this might be where it gets a little bit confusing. Um, so whenever I go to score this piece, I'm going to be scoring on the inside of this black Sharpie line. So my first score would actually be somewhere around here. Um, or not first score, but one of my scores are gonna be right here, okay? So what I'm going to, what I'm going to do is bring this piece down past that Sharpie line to basically butt up against that next piece of glass. Okay, so just like this, and I'm going to hold it and trace this piece out.
Okay. And then I'm just going to put a little arrow. That glare is in the way. I'm just going to put a little arrow right here telling me that I'm going to be scoring on the inside of this line. Okay. This line's a little wonky. So I'm going to be scoring on the inside of that line and bringing it all the way up. And then for this next piece, I'm going to be doing the same thing. I'm going to be bringing this piece all the way on the inside of these black Sharpie lines and then tracing it. And then I'm going to put arrows that I'm going to be cutting on the inside of this line and the inside of that line. Then finally for this piece, I'm just going to put it right on the inside of this little tip right here um, and then just connect it to the top. and I'm already cutting on the inside of this line, so I'll be able to score on the inside of this line, and then it would be the inside of number 10. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> okay, so now I think we're going to start with the most complicated piece, um, so I can sort of show you what I'm talking about with being on the inside of your Sharpie line, outside of the Sharpie line, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of detail on how to cut glass. I do have a video on how to cut glass um, on my channel um, using what I call the Hot Wheels technique, which basically just means that you're not pushing and shoving your glass cutter into your glass, that you're really just gliding on the top of your uh, glass, um, that you're not even really necessarily looking for the most perfect sound on every single type of glass, um, but that you're saving your wrist and you're not putting an extreme amount of pressure down onto the sheet of glass. Okay, with that being said, I just oiled the tip of my cutter a little bit, and I'm going to go with this score first. So I'm going to be on the inside of this line, the inside of this line, and then I'll be on the inside of this line. So I'm always scoring on the inside of my pattern piece. So if I were to lay this down, I'm going to be scoring on the inside of all of those Sharpie marks to make this size pattern piece. I'm not scoring on the outside so that I can grind it later. I'm trying to score it as perfect as possible now to save time at the grinder. So with that being said, let's take this first, first score. As you can hear, it's not extremely loud. I'm not pushing down very far hard. Um, and I'm just using my hands to steadily glide across this sheet of glass and guiding myself all the way through that score line. Okay, so I have my first score line and what I'm going to use is my running pliers. And when I'm using my running pliers, all of your uh, running pliers are going to have a little notch right here at the top indicating where the center of this tool is. And whenever I use my running pliers, I'll put the center on either side of the score line. It sort of helps that crack choose which side it's going to run on, and it gives you a nice flat edge rather than something that's sort of going like this um, all the way down the side of your, of your glass. If you are starting to see 
that when you're breaking your glass and you're getting a really jagged edge, a really squiggly edge, it could be one of two things. It could either mean that it's time to change the tip of your scoring tool. These can get dull and it ends up making the score not as precise and can kind of make that crack a little wiggly. Um, or, yeah, sometimes it, the glass is the problem. Sometimes the glass is the problem. There could be a little piece of smut, you know, in there that just sort of ruins the whole score of that, um, or maybe you press down too hard. I guess there's a few indications, but in general, if your, your tip is working well and your, um, breaking your glass on either side of that scoring line, um, it should be a fairly straight uh, break. So let's do that now. I'm just go, gonna go on one side of that score line and just gently start squeezing and break that piece. So you can see now that my Sharpie is on either side. So I have Sharpie right here and then I also have Sharpie on this side, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so let's go in with the next break. So now I'm going to go all the way across right here. So I'm gonna be scoring on the inside of this line and then the inside of this line. And then running that score on either side with my running pliers. Sometimes you might have to go through them either end to make it meet up and completely break. And there we go. Okay, so let's do this inside curve next. So there are many different ways to do an inside curve. This one in particular, I'm going to do with one score line and one crack and pop it out like that. Um, whenever they start getting deeper um, and a lot narrower, you might have to take it out in a couple chunks. So with this one, we're just gonna go with one score and one break. And I'm gonna go on the inside of this black Sharpie line. Okay, so there's a, a few different ways that you can attack the actual um, break. So what you can do is start at the deepest part of that curve and give it a little tap. And you can start seeing that there's a little crack starting there. And then you can follow it through with your running pliers. So I'll go down at this end, give it a little squeeze, come down at this end, give it a little squeeze and it pops right out. Okay, so since I sort of went over the basics and the, the more complicated um, chunks of this glass breaking scoring on this piece in particular, I'm just gonna go through a time lapse and then meet you back at the grinder. Now I'm going to move on to the grinding portion of this process and I am the type of person that does not like to be at the grinder for a long time. I don't want to be spending time trying to grind away an entire 
um, Sharpie mark. Uh, I just do not want to spend the time doing that. Um, so what I do spend my time doing is obviously taking my time scoring and breaking my pattern pieces so that they're as accurate as possible. Um, and then I'll come over to the grinder and I'll grind away these little um, sort of nicks that you see. Um, just so I know that it's gonna fit nice and flat in the lid um, without it sort of sitting on these particular um, sharp edges. So you can see there's a pretty sharp edge right there that I'm gonna end up just grinding away, making that edge nice and flat and smooth. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I thought I hit play on a little time lapse for the grinder and I surely didn't, but um, <laughs> I have all of my pieces ground. I just gotta dry them off real fast and we'll start letting. Here's what the piece is going to look like completely assembled. Um, I just wanted to sort of lay it out to show you this um, background swirl. Looks really nice. Um, it has a nice flow to it. So the next thing that you're going to want to do to get ready um, with leading, it's a really smart thing to have some sort of square or 90 degree angle, um, whether you make it or you just drill it in place for a particular piece. Um, that becomes extremely helpful. So this is just a steel um, 90 degree angle that I welded together. Um, and use for these small sun catchers. So this is what I'm going to be using to start assembling this piece. Um, when getting started in leading, it's really important to practice safety. So wearing gloves, making sure you're washing your hands, um, obviously not, you know, putting your hands on your face or in your mouth, that kind of thing because lead is dangerous when you're inhaling it or ingesting it. So really practicing smart safety when handling lead came um, is really important. So with that being said, I'm gonna go into what I'm going to be using for this particular piece. So with this piece, I'm going to be using U came. So the U came is going to be used for the border and it is shaped like the letter U and it has this channel on the inside and just a flat edge on the outside that'll be used just to frame the actual sun catcher itself. So um, especially for smaller pieces, this is perfectly fine to use. Um, you can use lead on basically any border, any size piece. Um, as it gets larger though, as your pieces get larger, you're gonna want something to reinforce this lid, whether that be a wood frame um, or a metal frame. If it's going to be sitting in a window, that's that's all great. Um, or you can use zinc, so that's also an option. So, without really going into a deep dive on framing, we're using this U round, um, I believe this is 3 16 lead king. Now, for the actual piece itself, I'm going to also be using round. And I believe that this is 5 16 um, I'm pretty sure this is 5 16 I also use 3 16 round. Um, but I think I'm going to use this 5 16 It looks really nice. It's a little bit chunkier, a um, little bit wider. And I think it just has a really nice clean finish. And it's also round like I said before but it has a channel on either side so that I can start assembling the piece and um, putting it all together. So these are the two leads that I'm going to be using and I'm going to start off by just chopping off a few pieces and putting them on the inside parts right here um, just to start out the frame. I'm going to nail this down so it doesn't move. Um, you're going to want obviously horseshoe nails. I have a whole video on how to get started in lead came on my channel. So watch that. I give you a whole list of everything that you're going to need um, as far as safety, as far as tooling, um, all the things. So I know this is a, a detailed video, but it's also going to be just 
a little bit faster. So if you're already pretty familiar with the tools and the materials, then awesome. If not, then go watch that video. Um, I'll link all the videos down to the in the description below for you. You can just give them a watch and get some more um, knowledge on how to get started in lead came. So with that being said, I'm going to set up my camera and I'm going to start um, cutting out a couple pieces of lead and nailing this 90 down. So now I have my two pieces of lead on the sides of my 90 for my frame and my first piece of glass on the inside. So I'm just going to hover over top of this piece of glass and mark out these angles so that I can cut them with my, my nippers and set it in place. So now I have my second piece of glass held in place uh, with just a little piece of lead and a nail um, and I have it pressed in to that channel. So now my next piece I'm going to bed, bend the lead around this bottom part of this leaf for this little piece right here. So now when it comes to trimming this end, I'm going to be trying to keep this angle. So you can always take a little piece and just slide it in and get a really good estimate on how much you need to chop off to compensate for this piece of lead that's going to be coming in right here. Um, or whenever you do it enough, you can kind of guesstimate how much you have to trim. Just like that. And it might actually have to do a little bit more, but you get the point. It takes a little bit to um, get used to how much lead you actually have to trim for these angles. So, but I'm just going to time lapse through this. Um, again, I have a really detailed video on how the lead um, assemble lead panels. So I'm going to Keep assembling this and bring it back whenever it's time to solder. Okay, so the whole thing is leaded. Um, obviously you can see that the frame is still extending way beyond uh, what it needs. Those are all good cut after I'm done soldering. So I always use this little Heiko soldering iron with this temperature gauge. I always have it at 410. I'm gonna turn that on and then um, flux all of the joints. I use gel flux and then solder it all up. So now the piece is soldered, the next step that I'm going to do is fill in these corner spots. So you can see that there's like a little hole, obviously where all the lead is uh, meeting up because of the U-came. 
So what I'm going to do is just put a little dab of flux, turn on my fume absorber, and I'm just going to take a little bead of solder, just pick it up with my soldering iron, heat it up onto the lead, and just cover up that hole. And I'm going to do that to all four sides, and then I'm going to put a chain on it. Okay, so I'll just quickly go through how I make my jump ring. So I just use this 3 16 weld rod um, that I like smashed all of the flux off. You can use obviously any size metal rod or wooden dowel rod. This is just what I had. And I have this really thin pre-tinned copper wire. And I just start wrapping that around the rod fairly tightly just wrap that all the way around like that slide it off and then just use a crappy pair of nippers or needle nose, some sort of um, nippers. And I just start nipping off these jump rings. So I only need two, so that's all I'm going to nip off. So it's just one and then two. Okay, so that's how I make those. And then I take these little like jewelry um, pliers. So I have these flat nose ones and then these sort of round nose ones. It's just what I had, they're small. And then I open up the jump rings a little bit. Okay. And then I take my chain unravel it and sort of give a guesstimate of how long I want it so that's about right right there and then I'll just fold it in half like this take these crappy nippers chop that and then put the jump rings on either end and close them back up. Okay. And then this is the back, this is the front. I mean, obviously it doesn't matter. I'm gonna be putting my jump rings on the sides here. So what I like to do is prop it up against my smoke absorber here. And what I'll do is take these skinny pliers, hold it on the opposite end of the closed portion of the jump ring and then just turn on my smoke absorber, bring over my solder, put a little bit of flux on the piece and flux on the jump ring. Then I just take a bead of solder with my soldering iron. Oh, give me one second. I gotta flip this this way. I always forget to do this because I'm right-handed. Okay, so opposite way for me at least try to bring that in the camera. Okay, so again, I'm going to take my soldering iron, take a little bead of solder, and I'm going to put that bead of solder on the jump ring first, let it melt to the jump ring, and then set the whole thing down onto the lead, and let that melt into the lead. You can put a second bead on if you want to make it look a little nice. 
same thing on the other side. Put some flux on there. And then grab the jump ring on the opposite end of that closed section. Make sure your chain isn't all um, twisted and just put some flux on the jump ring itself. Grab a bead of solder, put it on the jump ring first, let it melt to the jump ring and then set the jump ring and the hot solder onto the piece and just finish it off. Okay, so that's it for the soldering portion. So now I have to wash this off. So now I'm at the sink and what I'm going to do is wash off all of the flux in the sink since this is a smaller piece. I'm not going to be cementing it I'm just going to be washing it and then patina, putting black patina on the whole thing. So I turn on hot water and I use the soft side of this really crusty looking sponge. Um, and then I use CJ's flux remover, put it on the sponge and scrub off all of the flux on here. I don't use this bristle side because it can um, scar like really uh, mark up the glass, so. Get it really foamy. get all of that flux off, even on the jump rings. Okay, now I'm gonna wash it off. Okay. So now it's completely washed off and while I'm here at the sink, I'm going to patina. So what I do is give this black patina a little shake. I grab a paper towel and I just sort of soak the paper towel on this patina. And then I start wiping it on the piece. You can see it gets nice and dark. Um, I find that hot water really helps us get nice and dark um, I'm sure this would work great with copper foil pieces too. Um, so if you're like immediately washing your piece in hot water, try using the patina right after washing um, while your piece is like still warm. It might help you get a really nice black, wow, <laughs> a really nice black patina. I have you like sitting on the sink, so. Anyway, I'm just patinating this. I'll be right back. And then once your piece has all of the patina on it, I just go right back in with the same sponge and a little bit of that CJ's flux remover. And I just give it a little wash again to get all of that excess patina off. Cause that patina can stain your glass. So you want to get that off the surface as well. So just give it a little wash and rinse that. Okay, we 
Look how cute that is. Okay. So the only thing that's left for this piece is for it to completely dry and then I like to polish it with a nice soft brush to get it nice and shiny. Obviously this is still wet, but I wanted to come outside and show you what it looked like in the sunlight. Um, you can see that that white Baroque glass really lined up really nicely. All of those um, lines ended up matching very nicely on the background, so I'm really happy with it. Um, yeah, so this is what it looks like. I hope the customer ends up being really happy with it. And I hope this process helped you with your lead cam sun catchers. So yeah, I think that's it for this video. If you would not mind, please subscribe to this channel, like this video, check out all the other videos I put in the description about lead cam, um, scoring and breaking glass, all those fun things but I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna polish it and package it up for the customer. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. Um, I'd love to hear them or maybe video ideas, something that you need help on. Um, yeah. So you can also check out my website. It's kingdomcreativeglass.com. Um, I sell all of my stained glass artwork there. Um, and I create all of my own designs, so please be kind and do not copy any artist designs. Um, but yeah, if you want to support the channel, you can always shop there. So I'll see you guys later.